As a property investor, it's very important to understand the dynamics of property investing. I normally talk about the two main property types that one can invest in. Number one, we talk about a cash flow driven property. Number two, we talk about a capital appreciation driven property. Now, of course, all of this is dependent on the outcome that one wants to get by investing in these types of properties. But now let's start with a cash flow driven property so that we understand exactly what does that mean. Because you probably have heard a lot of people talking about, I want a property that is cash flow positive, cash flow positive. But what does that mean? All right. So technically that means that you want a property that when you look at your rental income minus your expenses that are associated with the property, like your rates and taxes, like the levies, if it's a sectional title, like the rental management fee, if you have an agent managing that property, uh, maintenance fees. So basically all the costs that are associated with that property. So when you minus all of that cost from the rental income that you get from the tenant, you should be making a profit. So generally, that's what you want when you're talking about a cash flow driven property. Uh, now, probably you want that from day one. I mean, that will be fantastic. Imagine if you're making a profit from day one from a property, right? Um, so it's possible, but not all the time. Uh, so for example, sometimes you are buying a future income on that particular property. So you are buying this two bedroom house. It has a big yard that you can put in you know cottages there or you can call you can put in there what we call bedrooms but there is still some work that needs to be done in that particular property so you know it's a future income that you are looking at but it's gonna uh, ultimately lead to you being cash positive or sometimes you do buy a property below market value so let's say um in in an a in your area um a two bedroom one bath is going for average maybe 500,000 and you get it for 300,000 because you have a motivated seller who is leaving the country or relocating whatever the case might be right so already within that you have equity um, but of course then it helps you from a cash flow point of view right um, so these are uh, but what type of properties can this be um, so this could be any property uh, uh, actually it can be any property but mainly it will be like your multi lets it will be your Airbnbs, it will be your student accommodation, it will be your medical centers, and a number of pr properties that you can look into, all right? So that's the one side of the coin. Then we deal with the other side of the coin, which are capital appreciation driven properties. Now, what kind of properties are these? These are properties that you're not necessarily zooming into the cash flow. Um, so if I'm making a profit, great. If I'm breaking even, great. Um, if I'm making a little bit of loss, it's okay, right? Uh, depending what you can swallow as a property investor. But normally these types of properties are properties that are geared towards the valuation. So you want the power of the appreciation of the value of those properties. So you are buying in a great area for a certain amount, but you know, or you can see, you are projecting that because there's a lot of developments coming up, um, that in the near future, maybe in the next two years, the value of those properties will be higher. So then what you would then do is that you would then leverage against the capital appreciation. So you're leveraging against the appreciation of that of the value of that property. So if I bought it at 500,000, now it's worth uh, 700,000. So now I have equity of 200,000. I can basically use that 200,000 to either sell the property at the profit. So I'm making 200,000. This I'm just hypothetically saying without uh, taking fees into consideration. So meaning that I'll be making 200,000 from this property. Um, or um, maybe let's say I have a, a mortgage bond, so I bought this property via a bank and now this property has appreciated by 200,000. So what I can now do is that I can then go and refinance that 200,000 or we call it, call it another name is we can get a further bond. So I go again, I go back to the bank again to say bank, I now want the 200,000 in terms of the value of the properties that is appreciated because when I bought it, I bought it for five, but now the current market value is 700,000. 
So I want to borrow against this 200,000. So they will do the assessment. They say, okay, Gavin, you do qualify. Here's the 200,000. I can take this 200,000. I can get a very cheap property. I can buy cash. And I can rent that property out as well. So remember this other one, I'm renting it out. So I buy this one cash for 200,000. It's an example. Um, then I can then rent out this property, which then helps me to pay the increased installment because remember now my bond is no longer five is now seven hundred thousand so meaning that i'm paying more but i can use the rent that i'm getting from the other side to then supplement and help me to pay for this side all right um so basically that's what you can do now what type of properties um are these this normally would be new developments um you know so there are kind of properties that you can basically get the appreciation doesn't necessarily mean it's a new development but why new development is because it's coming into a new area um, and a lot of the times that brings in it like it injects life in that particular area it it, 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 it boosts the economic activity in that particular area so that uh, in, in many times it then pushes up the valuation so you'll see that maybe after three years four years um, the place is booming um, you know the, the people that got in while it was still starting up maybe they bought it five now the properties are going for nine hundred thousand in in two years time four years time so that on itself now is that it's an appreciation in the value of your property that you can leverage against and that's the beauty of our property because um like for example if you're using a bond right you're using other people's money um you bought this property uh, via a bond and you it's not your own cash and you then uh, put a tenant to pay for 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 the bond and all the costs so technically that means that the tenant is paying for for you well it's paying that property on your behalf and then in the next three years four years the property is now worth more and then you can go and leverage against that equity whether you sell the property at the at the profit or you go and refinance as i said so this technically are two things that one needs to look at right so i normally advise again depending on what the outcome is uh, i normally advise that you invest on both why is that important is that on the one side you have liquidity so then your cash flow runs um, on the other side you have equity which means that i can have capital that i can use to then increase my portfolio because the problem is that at times people get stuck so you do have cash flow driven properties and they're moving you know you're getting cash every month but it's so difficult to scale because when you see another property um you need to, you need if you want to do the same thing that you did on that particular property there needs to be some capital most of the time that you need to inject whether it's for transferring costs whether it's to fix the property whether it's to build um now where do you get that capital because now you have locked that capital into this one particular project that property is now running but the, the money is locked in there so you want to buy some more so where you get the money and sometimes you cannot go and borrow again whereas now you know you can use um, the power of refinancing to basically do that so that's one property on the right um, it can be your father christmas i call it father christmas because then you can use the equity there to then be able to pump on the other side and then you keep on building so for like according to me you, you scale much more effectively when you balance it out and it makes sense i mean if you think about you know as a business right so let's say you're starting a business or you see these businesses that are big are successful you always hear them rate they say they're raising money you know for them to grow and grow open branches um adding more services hiring more people they need money right so they need equity so where do they get that equity so a lot of the times obviously they they they, they go and list in the stock market to raise money right um, through the valuation of the business so meaning that the business has now shown value that people can buy against the value and that's exactly what you do with property is that now that property has shown value so it has increased in the valuation so when you go to the bank and say bank i need more money they see that no man um there is equity here so it, it, it's beneficial for them to give you that two hundred thousand because that property is worth now more than what you initially bought it for so if you cannot pay they will not they're gonna get that money so that's basically the rationale around it so it's very important 
to understand those dynamics um, because I see a lot of people you know you get in you don't know what you're doing and um, you know you bad mouth the, the industry because you're just not scaling uh, enough or you are you you, 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 you invested in, in in a property that is not in line with what you want to achieve and then, then you say yeah, property investing does not work it does work a lot of people are benefiting from this and it's a great tool to create wealth but you you, you need to know what you are doing um, at the end of the day so I wanted to clarify those two sides so that you know exactly so say when I'm buying this property um, what is the outcome do I want to get is the appreciation that I want to get because of the area um, or is the, the cash flow based on the type of property because then I can do like a multi let and then I can maximize my earning potential so please make sure that you understand exactly what you're doing you know when you're investing in property or just get hold of me and i can be able to assist you and guide you uh, around it you know so please please don't just get in blindly uh, but know exactly what you're doing so please leave a comment below um, and also subscribe to the channel uh, for more updates that will be coming and a lot of more things that will be coming around property around personal finances and of course we're going to be talking about mental wellness um, as well just to to have a, a balanced kind of approach thank you so much for watching Gavin Cabela signing out